to my third vlog. Um, this one, I'm not sure, this one will probably be a little shorter just because my parents are gone this week. Um, and so my older sister and I are kind of in charge of everyone at home, so there, so there will probably be a little less crafting and knitting going on than usual. Um, but I did want to show you the progress that I have been making, um, on a couple of projects. So I recorded a podcast episode on Tuesday. Today is Thursday, April 20th. And, um... So I haven't, as of this video recording, I haven't uploaded that podcast yet, but, um, when I uploaded the podcast, I was here, I'm trying to find a way to make that not shadowy, I was here on my, to waken up the flowers, and now I've done just over two inches. It's in the middle of a row, um, I stopped in the middle of a row, which I haven't been doing with this swe sweater at all. But I was watching Beauty and the Beast with my little sisters this evening, and one of them came over and just looked at me and said, Em, can I sit with you? So, of course, put the knitting down. Um, and I ended up with two of them on my lap, which is always fun. Um, and they're eight and six now, so that's not always easy to do. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, I mean, slowly but surely making some progress on this. Um, this is what I've been concentrating on. Over the past couple of days, most of the knitting that I've done has been on this sweater. Um, yes, the the cable patterns at the the ones on the outside, I'm totally fine with. Like I don't need to, to look at the charts for those ones. It's this one in the middle because it's not just like a traditional cable. Like this cabled sweater, the when I made this, I didn't even need to look at the pattern except for, like. When I got to the point where I needed to do, like, decreases for the sleeves or anything like that. Um, because they're all just very standard cable patterns that are very easy to memorize. Um, but yeah, it's def I'm definitely enjoying this. And I'm trying to get a lot of work done on it now while it's still a bit cooler. Um, because I know that when the when summer comes around, I'm not really going to want to work on this a whole lot. So yeah, so th this is what I've mostly been concentrating on when I, if I'm at home and going to knit, this is what I've been pulling out. Um, but for my, I did a bit of car knitting today, probably got me, I don't know, 45 minutes or so of car knitting in today. Um, my sister and I took the little ones just out shopping just for something to do. <laughs> to distract them from the fact that our parents are flying across the ocean right now. Um... So my car knitting, and then sometimes I manage to sneak in a little bit of knitting when I'm on my lunch break at work. It depends. Um, I work at a daycare, so sometimes I will eat lunch with the kids. But then sometimes with that, when I'm not able to do that, I actually have to eat lunch on my lunch break instead of knitting. Um, I've been working on these socks. These are the Grand Central Socks um, by Mina Phillips, part of her New York Sock Club collection. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of dark and I was just getting ready to go to bed do a little bit of knitting before I go to bed. So it's kind of dark. Sorry. Um, not really. Okay. Um, but yeah, these are my Mrs. Potts socks because I'm just all about the Beauty and the Beast right now. Um, but because it has, it's kind of hard for it to see in the sock. I don't know if you can see it in the yarn a little bit better. Mm. I'll have to show you this yarn again in good and better lighting. But there's sort of like that lavender, like a lavender purple kind of gray color and then like the yellow gold color, um, like Mrs. Potts and these are living, I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking of the yarning connection with Miss, to Mrs. Potts when I cast them on and stored them in this double pointed needle holder, but it's perfect. This is from Molly Klein Designs. She doesn't have any more of these in her shop, but when I checked the other day, she still had some other kinds. Hopefully she still does by the time I upload this vlog. I don't know. But yeah, those are my Mrs. Potts socks, and that has been my mindless knitting. The pattern is definitely super easy to memorize, easy to do. Although I, in the pictures on the pattern, Mina just has the 
um, the stitch pattern on the front half of the sock and then stockinette stitch on the back. So when I was looking at the pattern, I was like, oh yeah, I'll do that. But I think I'm so used to just doing the sock pattern all the way around the leg of the sock that when I started to do the stitch pattern, plus I, I started it this morning before I went to work. I had a few extra minutes, so I sat down and did some knitting. And I was tired. It was 6 o'clock in the morning. So I just did this pattern all around the leg. Oh well. I'll have a pattern all the way around the legs. So yeah. But it's it's easy to memorize. Not a big not a big deal. I'm still not totally sure how well the yarn that I picked for the heels, cuffs, and toes. How well it actually goes with it. But again, I'm sorry, it's hard for you guys to really see. But yeah. Oh, and I'm using for my um my stitch marker to mark the beginning of the round. Um, on on smaller needles, I can use my progress keepers, which I like to do just because they're they're more fun. The only ones these are the only ones that I have is from Molly Klein Designs. Again, the, I get her like her her tea time set or something. I don't know what it's called, but this one is a little tea cup, and I'm actually using another one on my sweater. This is a a teapot. With a little, with a little teacup, and so these, some of the other ones are really cute. I've used them before. Like a, there's one that's a tea bag. I think there's a, another teapot and another teacup one. I don't remember exactly. But yeah, so that's the knitting that I have been working on over the past couple of days. Hello. Today is Saturday, April twenty second. Um, yeah, and I just it's like ten o'clock at night, but I figured. Um, this is the time I had today to just give you a little bit of an update on what I've been working on. I'm using a different lens right now than I normally do with my big camera. Um, I noticed when I was editing my last podcast episode that there's a lot of noise and I think it's coming from the lens because when I've taken videos with my other lenses, um, they do not have that background noise, but it also means I have to sit much farther back from the camera. So hence the very close face shot. <coughs> but yeah, I just wanted to show you a little bit of what I've been working on. So yesterday, um, my there's a couple in my church that hosts a college and career group, and we, we have a lot of young couples in our church, so we have a lot of people who will come and bring their kids. And this one couple has a son who is he'll be three in August and he was just and I, I'll often I'll bring my knitting because like we'll sit around and we'll play games we'll talk we'll have a bible study and so I'll often bring an easy knitting project to work on and so I was sitting there and I was working on my uh, Mrs. Potts socks and like he just he was sitting across the table from me he, I mean he's active he doesn't sit still for all that long I mean what little boy does uh, but he was, he was watching me and he said, what, what are you making? So I told him and I was actually wearing a pair of hand knit socks. So I pulled them off and I was like, oh, see, like, like I'm making a pair of socks, like these ones. <laughs> and so like he wandered off and did something else. Then he came back a little, a little while later and he sat and watched me again. And then he came over around the table and stood right next to me and just watched me. He started kind of like, and I have it in my project bag. So he started kind of like looking at the yarn and. He, he would pull out a section of yarn, like, because it's got different colors, and he'd pull, oh, use this one, use this part. So I actually, I had him sit on my lap for a little while, and I put my hands over his. He just held onto the needles, like, he wasn't really doing anything. But it was just so cute to see how he was so fascinated by what I was making. So, yeah, I've made a bit of progress on these. The stitch pattern is super fun and super easy. It's... It's like the perfect combination because there's two just plain knitting rows in between the patterning row or the rounds, which means that it's mindless enough to be mindless knitting, but then the stitch pattern is interesting enough so that I don't just get super bored and put and not work on it because I'm bored. So yeah, I'm I'm a little afraid they're gonna be a little small. Because I went with the smallest size, so there's 56 stitches on this. And they're on, which I've done before, but 
I think when I've done 56 stitch socks, it's been on size 2 needles, and I'm knitting these in size 1. So hopefully they turn out alright. I mean, and if they're a little small for me, I'm sure I can find somebody that will that they will fit. So, but yeah, oh, and while I was at my college and career group last night, like, the little boy who was going through my, my bag and he was pulling out, I have, like, some erasers in here from actually when... I won this bag in a giveaway from New Hampshire Knits, and Claire, it was right after Halloween, so Claire had, had included candy and some little, um, I don't know if I can find them now, just like little Halloween erasers, oh, and so he was kind of going through my knitting bag, and he found these, and so we got some, some pencils and some paper, and he was enjoying using erasers, I had chocolate in here, but that got put away because it was like 8.30 at night, and he's two and a half years old, he does not eat chocolate at 8.30 at night. Um, but yeah, but what, another, um, another young woman saw, she saw this and she's like, is that Beauty and the Beast? And so I showed her what, you know, how the, how it worked and she's like, that's genius. I was like, I know, I don't know why I didn't know that these existed for so long. Like, I don't know what I did before I had double pointed needle cozies. I don't know. I lost a lot of stitches when projects were in bags. So yeah, that's my progress on my Mrs. Potts sock. Most of that got done during college and career last night. But today I've been working on my Brookdale vest. And I've actually, I probably did, let's see where the de last decrease is. I probably did from like here to here. So probably, I mean, a good like one and a half to two inches. And I didn't spend tons of time on this today. But mostly just in the evening. But yeah, that's the progress that I'm making. It's definitely growing. And I did decide, um, because my row gauge had two extra rows for four inches, so it's just a little bit small, I am doing a couple extra rows between the sets of decreases. There's a certain number of rows it's supposed to be between the decrease rows, but I'm just knitting a couple extra rows um, just to make sure that the vest doesn't end up being too short. Um, cause I've just found that cropped styles don't really look that good on me, and I don't really want a crop, cropped vest. And yeah, I just love this stitch pattern along the edge. I love it, because it's, 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 like, textured, but it's not... It's similar to a seed stitch, but not really. I forget what she calls it. Rice stitch, maybe? Yes, rice stitch panel. So it just gives it a really nice... Nice detailing. Rather than just a, like a standard ribbed egg right there. So that's what I have been working on. Um, I waking up the flowers pullovers way over, you know, two feet from me. Um, I have been spending quite a bit of time on that this week. I'll have to pull that out and show you at some point. Um, but yeah, I've just um, been hanging out, knitting a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else that I wanted to say. Still need to block the baby sweater that I, I need to have that ready for Friday. This coming Friday. Hopefully that gets done soon. And I reached the like the length that I want for my Evermore cowl. But I need to block that. The instructions say to block it and then graft the ends together because it was it has a provisional cast on and then you leave the stitches live um block it and then um graft it together so hopefully at some point in the next few days i will get around to blocking those two items and then hopefully have a finished cowl yay so yeah that's been my saturday today
Sunday, April 23rd. Um, it looks like it's going to finally be a sunny day. I love the great rainy days, but that I do get tired of that eventually. Um, yeah, and so I woke up, this morning I woke up before my alarm went off, so I went and made myself a nice big mug of tea, Earl Grey, like, I could seriously, I could live on Earl Grey tea. A little bit of milk, a little bit of sugar, perfect. So yeah, I went downstairs, made myself a cup of tea, and now I came back, I've got some knitting and some reading. taking the dog out for a small morning walk um we live next door to the church where my father's a pastor and so there's a little bit of like a field path area in between our house and the church and so we just just take him out here and give him a little bit of a walk before we all disappear to church for the morning but it's finally sunny and i'm just wearing a sweater I don't need a coat. I mean, it's kind of chilly. If I was going to be outside for a really long time, I'd put a coat on. But it's like 40-something degrees. Yay! And speaking of this sweater, this is one that I had bought. It's basically, it's kind of like poncho-like, but it has a little bit of a sleeve. Um, and I, it's kind of like a cocoon-style sweater almost, which I'd always, I had seen nice designs for, but I was never totally sold on it. I didn't know how I would like it, how it would fit. Um, Gridley, come. There's a four-wheeler path, but we don't go all the way down because you never know who's on the other side. Um, <coughs> hey, bud. Here he is. It's Gridley. It's named for, um, well, it's, his full name is Gridley Thomas Buchanan. Um, we got him from someone whose father-in-law had passed away, and his name was Lucky. So we were trying to come up with a name that ended in a Y. Um, one of my brothers wanted Bucky, like Bucky Barnes from um, from Marvel, the Avengers. Um, one of my little sisters wanted Tommy, and so we were we were talking, and we like to have some just for fun, some sort of historical name. Um, but, and then my sister, who is 18, she turned 19, but she suggested, she loves Hallmark movies, like Christmas ones, and one of her favorites, the main character, his last name is Gridley, and that's what everyone calls him. So they just call him by his last name. So as soon as she suggested that, we were all for Gridley. Gridley, come on. He's smelling something. He's part beagle, so. Um, but yeah, so... We, so Gridley's his first name, and then to appease the six-year-old, Thomas is one of his middle names, and then to appease the Bucky, um, we went with Buchanan, as in James Buchanan, one of the presidents of the U.S. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to the sweater. So now I bought this one, so now that I have a cocoon sweater, I'm thinking there's some really gorgeous patterns. Bristol Ivy has one, I think, in the second issue of the making magazine which I own so I'm thinking I might make that I just want to make all the things right now uh, but I'm trying to right now limit myself to having three projects like socks my uh, waking up the flowers sweater and one other project which right now is my buttercup vest just because if I have too many then I'm not focusing on my cabled sweater, which I love to work on, but if I have a newer project, then Gridley, come. If I have a newer project that I'm excited to cast on, I'm not going to be focusing on the one that's been on the needles forever. Your leash is like above your ear, dog. What are you doing? Let's go. My shoes are wet. I found, especially when like my parents are gone, I need to get myself fully dressed and ready for church in the morning before I can walk the dog and get my little sisters ready. Oh, just got dark. Sun! So, yeah, this is my Sunday so far. 
Hello, hello. Today is Monday, April 24th. My calendar's on the wall over here. That's why whenever I say the date, I, ha I have to look over there to double check. Um, yes. So, it's been a good, um, past couple of days. We, yesterday was Sunday. Obviously, if today is Monday. <laughs> um, but we went to church in the morning. And then... Our parents are gone, and so there's a couple in our church, some family friends of ours, who invited us out to lunch and for a little small hike. So we did that yesterday. We went for lunch, did a pretty short hike. I mean, my, my younger siblings were with us, and the youngest one is six, so it couldn't be a very intense hike. But then we were driving, and we drove past a couple of ice cream places to try to see if we could go get ice cream, but this being April in Maine... That stuff does not open until May. So, yeah. Um, we ended up going and actually shooting... I don't know, what is it called? When you go play golf, just at a, a driving range. So we just stopped, which is nothing that any of us have ever done really before. Um, but that was fun, and then we did find an ice cream place that was open. So that was delicious. Um, I'm just put my little sisters to bed, getting ready to go to bed myself, but I only have a couple more rows on the back of my Waking Up the Flowers sweater before I start the armhole decreases. So I figured I would sit here and talk with you all. Let me see if I can get it so that you can actually see what I'm working on. So I fin finished the, the two rows before the armhole shaping. Oh, look at it. I love it so much. This progress keeper was, I think about a week ago. Yes, because a week ago, well like, a week ago tomorrow I guess, was when I recorded my last podcast. And so I put this in here just to kind of keep track of how far I have knit between podcast episodes. So I can definitely tell that I've been concentrating on this a bit more. I mean, it's a bit slow going. And I have found that my my hands, I think it's a combination of the more intense cabling as well as um, working with a heavier weight yarn that when I work, um, my hands just get tired faster and my fingers hurt a little bit more when I'm work when I work on this project than when I work on other ones. And I've even found that just working with heavier weight yarns mm, tends to make my hands and my fingers just more tired or just kind of more cramped up. And I don't know why that is. I can't I don't really know. <laughs> but I have heard other people mention the same thing. So yeah that's why Socks are for me are such a good portable knitting because if I end up sitting somewhere for a long time, then it's not like I can knit on socks forever and not have my hands 
cramp up or be in pain at all. And I mean, my hands don't like hurt when I work with worsted weight yarn, but I do it like at the end of a row of a row of this. I do have to like kind of kind of like stretch my fingers out a bit. But I think that's also because of just the cabling. My, I'm gripping it more tightly. I'm holding onto it. But so worth it. Sorry for like the ghostly shadows. My desk light is on. It's acting like a spotlight. So yeah, I am. I will hopefully start the armhole decreases tomorrow and experiment with decreasing in cabling patterns. That'll be fun. Hello, today is Tuesday, April something, <laughs> 25th. Um, so yeah, I got home from work and I need to block the baby sweater that I had recently knit. Well, the baby t-shirt that I had knit because the baby shower is on Friday and it's already Tuesday. So I need enough time for it to dry. And I've been starting to work on going through some of my, just kind of cleaning up my room a bit. Um, I had done a big purge a few months ago, but since that I have bought more yarn than I should have. <laughs> um, and yeah, and there are some things I'd kind of set aside to sort of say, okay, if I don't use this in the next couple of months, then I can get rid of it. So hence the slightly messy background. That and I discovered that I had this little, like, I had been storing my whips in this. Um, this used to be my grandmother's. I'm like, she didn't, like, give it to me. It was a, um, when my grandfather passed away several years ago, she had to downsize to move into the in-law apartment at my aunt and uncle, so she got rid of stuff. And so I had taken this, but I think one of our various cats peed in it at some point. And luckily, it did not get on anything, I think, except a couple of bags, which I had was doing laundry this afternoon anyway, so I threw those bags in. Hopefully they turn out okay, because they were both, like, handmade bags. Um, so yeah. Um, but I think I'm gonna have to get rid of this, and so I'm trying to figure out a new, um, kind of reconfigure my craft area, limited as it is, and, um, figure out how I want to store my whips. And so this, I've got a lot of stuff piled up. Like I had started this hat this winter, but then I ran out of the dark gray yarn and I d just left it. Thankfully, I don't have too many projects like this. Um, but like this one, I do have to do something with. And remember when I was thinking about how I couldn't find a size 10 circular needle? It was in here. So yeah. But yes, so I am blocking, I'm going to be blocking, um, I'm going to be blocking this baby tee and then my Evermore cowl. aggressively pinning this um it's already just being wet has stretched it out I'm basically just mostly blocking this for the lace panel so as long as the lace panel um so I'm basically happy as long as the lace panel is a little bit more stretched out and loosened up I'm not worried about the rest of the sweater um, yes, so I'm going to let that dry, and then the yarn turned the water pretty green, so I need to go dump that out and refill it to block my cowl.
is Thursday and I'm taking the dog for a walk again, which seemed like a perfect time to record a video. Uh, today I am, I put this on after work. This is my Let Me Fall pullover, which is the Flight by Sarah Pope pattern. Um, yeah, it's, it's been really rainy the past few days, um, but today hasn't been quite as rainy. It's still overcast and it actually... Um, the air's kind of muggy right now, so I don't, because I'm wearing this sweater, I'm comfortable inside, but I also do not need to put a coat on to come outside, which is very nice. But we actually have some green grass, it's very exciting. But today, um, I, this afternoon I started the armhole decreases for the back of my Waking Up the Flower sweater. Like voices coming from somewhere, but I can't see them. It's always a little weird. Stop eating the grass. Stop. Uh, yeah, so I put the armhole decreases on that. Done a few rows on my Mrs. Potts socks. Um, what else have I been working on? Oh, I yes, I so I got those two projects blocked. I still need to finish the cow. I'll do the finishing on that. Um. Hopefully that will happen sometime this weekend. Although my parents are coming home soon and I want to make sure that the house is nice and clean. Because I know that when I come home from work, Ridley, stop eating the grass. Um, my automatic response is to come home and clean. And I know that that will be what my mother want, will do if there's anything slightly messy when she comes home. Sorry, plane overhead. Ridley, Ridley, come. Whatever's out there, he will protect me. Oh, there's people. We live next door to my church, and we have a couple basketball hoops and a paved parking lot, and so sometimes people will go over and, and hang out in the parking lot. I think that's what's going on. So he's a little freaked out because he can't see them, but he can hear them. So yeah, that's what I've been up to lately. So my Evermore cowl is done blocking, and blocking definitely helped the the cowl to flatten out quite a bit. It's not curling nearly so much. Um, I think part of that is because of the yarn blooming, and part of it is just the wonder of blocking. And I got this um, this notions pouch. I believe the Etsy shop is called Lower End Nor. The little tag fell off of here, so I don't. I'll make sure to put it on the screen. Um, but I follow Elise. Her Instagram account is Elise and Life, and she loves to go thrifting. And started an Etsy shop using some of the fabrics and old tea towels that she has discovered while thrifting to create bags. So I finally actually have a cute notions pouch. For the longest time, I was using this old striped pencil case, like a plastic pencil case. And in here I keep a lot of my double pointed needles. I don't have a fancy or a good um, needle well system for organizing my knitting needles. So most of my double points are in here so that I know where they are. And then I have, you know, why not have multiple measuring tapes. And then I keep these scissors that I bought at Knitwit Yarn Shop recently, like within the past, I don't know, four months, I guess. But they're super cute. I've been looking for some that were craft specific. I was honestly using like kid safety scissors most of the time because that's what fit in my bag. But these scissors are super cute and fun to carry around. And then I have this little tin. This is a a calf kidston tin that I got at a little like antiques and eclectics shop a little while ago and in here is where I keep stitch markers progress keepers smaller stitch holders I've got my little road counter here which I honestly hardly ever use but I keep it just in case a few ends of yarn and my and the needles for weaving in ends. I honestly, I wish I had needles with slightly sharper tips, 
but these are the only, this is like the only needle I have. I have a few, couple of these that has an eye that's big enough to fit yarn through. So yeah, this unintentionally turned into a what's in my notions pouch, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm going to finish um, weaving in the ends and grafting this together. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. And then I need to make supper because then I'm off to a work training tonight. Speaking of work, you can see I have some, uh, some excellent literary books here on my desk that I had at work this past week. <laughs> Um, the Circus Ship and Westlandia. These are both actually, Westlandia is one of my favorite kids books ever. It's about a boy who, he's like an outcast, like he has a lot, a lot of people bully him. He doesn't really have any friends because he's different. He's not interested in what everyone else is interested in. Um, but then over the summer, he has to do a summer project and he uses what he's learned in school to found his own civilization in his backyard. And it's just super, super cool, gorgeous pictures. And the pictures are actually illustrated by a man who lives in a town 15 minutes away from me that I'm in all the time. And he actually did, um, painted the sets for the high school of that town. They did the Wizard of Oz several years ago that I went to see, and the sets were amazing. So yes, if you need good kids books, Westlandia by Paul Fleischman. Anyway... <laughs> It's sewing time. Hello, today is Sunday, April 30th. Because my parents have been gone this week, I haven't had as much time to record vlogs or edit them. So today is Sunday and I haven't started editing them yet, but this is going to be my last segment so I can start putting them together. Um, I did finish my Evermore cowl. I didn't I didn't wear this today. Um, it was, it's been quite warm today. I just put it on to show you how it looks when it, now that it's finished, all nice and blocked out. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting um, this little podcast vlog thing that I've got going. I love talking about knitting and it's so much fun to connect with other people who love to knit and who love to craft as well. So until I see you next time, I hope that you learn from your mistakes and have fun creating. Bye.